Cozumel, Mexico, an island known for scuba diving, an island known for beautiful beaches, and so much more. What's going on guys? My name is Mac Candy, also known as World Nomac, and I'm currently traveling all around the world, making videos of my experiences, things to do, and so much more. And in today's video guys, I'm gonna be sharing with you my 10 favorite things I did while living in Cozumel, Mexico for one month. Hi guys, we are here in Cozumel. <laughs> yeah. Cozumel, it's beautiful. Let's go. So guys, before we hop in, I just wanna mention that these things to do listed in this video are not in any specific order from best to worst. They're just simply how I put them in the video. So make sure you stick around until the end so you don't miss out on any of these epic and amazing things we did. For this first thing we did, make sure you set your alarm. Good morning guys from Cozumel, Mexico. My dad and I woke up super early to catch the sunrise here. This is from what the locals sold me, or specifically my Airbnb host, the best spot to catch the sunrise. And as you can see right behind me, look at this, and boom, 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 a little overexposed. It is stunning. We've got the drone up there, we've got the GoPro going. If you want to wake up early, see a nice peaceful sunrise, there's not too many people here, then you came to the right spot. The restaurant here, Mescalitos, isn't open yet. I think it opens sometime around 9.30. Maybe it's different because of the pandemic. You can still come down to the beach, hang out here. As you can see, there's not anyone around. I got my dad here chilling. And then way up there, you probably can't see him. There's a couple people hanging out as well. So a really beautiful spot, a calming morning to start out the day. It could not be better. The moped ride up is a little chilly, especially if you're coming from the Centro. It's about a 25 to 30 minute drive to get here. And you're driving at night, so drive carefully. But you won't regret it once you see this beautiful sunrise, guys. Enjoy. Today is a huge day because it is the first time I'm ever going to be surfing. For the next four hours, we're here with Bernie and the squad. Como te llamas? Mi amigo, Bernie himself. Hola. Catherine, yeah. she's the one who got us in today. My dad. And we're going to be learning how to surf right back here. So we're gonna do a little instruction first, hop out there on the boards and uh, see what we can do. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous because the ocean looks strong and there's not a single other person out here, but super, super excited. So the part that I really appreciated about this surf lesson is we spent time to get the basics down before actually going out into the intimidating ocean. All right, we have successfully passed the initial training. I'm feeling pretty confident. Already have super sore calves, so I probably shouldn't have gone to the gym this morning, but twice the workout, can't complain there. Now it is time for the real stuff. Grabbing the surfboards, hitting the waves. We'll see you out there. Here we go. First time surfing. Probably the first time ever even carrying a surfboard. All right. <laughs> First one, I was able to stand up on the board. Probably 50% of the time, I was able to stand up that quickly. But it was actually more smooth than I thought. The hardest part is when you first get up, and then if you can get your feet balanced, then you can really just ride the waves. After a full morning of surfing, Bernie really took care. I wanna say that one thing that really sets him apart is he will give you the technique. And when it comes to surfing, I'm no expert, but after one day, I feel super confident. I'm ready to do more surfing, I was able to stand up on the first try, and I think it's specifically because we did a bunch of practice uh, trainings before we actually went out on the water. Because as I mentioned, when we first arrived here, I saw those waves and I was very nervous. After some training here with Bernie, he really took care. We went out there and rode some waves. It was awesome. So guys, if you're coming to Cozumel, make sure to check out Bernie's business. I'll put a link in the description below so you're able to find him and surf when you're here. We'll see you guys next time.
Alright guys, and so the next thing to do here on the things to do list in Cozumel, Mexico is we're exploring Chacanab Adventure Park. One thing I want to mention is we are here during the pandemic, so you're going to see this place quite empty, which is kind of nice because we'll be able to do everything very quickly without waiting on anything. So excited to show you guys all around this park. So first of all, to get into Chacanab Adventure Park, it costs about 26 US dollars for an adult and then about 18 US dollars for kids between four to 12 years old. And as for the park, they have pretty much everything you could imagine for an adventure park. You could easily spend a full day here doing things from like the sea lion show to hanging out by the beach. There's a lot of really great restaurants and a bunch of cool additional activities you can do. Also, you can even find yourself in some Mayan ruins. So now we're gonna head over to do some scuba diving here in Chacana. So our next thing we're going to show you here in the island of Cozumel is we're going to go scuba diving. It wouldn't be a things to do video here in Cozumel unless you're scuba diving. One thing I wanna tell you, if you've never scuba dived before, coming to Cozumel is your perfect opportunity to try it out for the first time. You can actually do discover scuba. You can figure out if you like it or if you don't. And right here, you can come see my buddy Sergio. Hi and he will give you a full instruction. He'll take you around eight meters deep and show you this amazing and beautiful blue crystal clear water. All right guys, suited up as you can see, just did a solid 25 or 30 minute Discover Scuba instruction. It was super clear. One thing I wanna mention is you wanna go to a person that is certified to give this course because already I feel so much more confident than when I went in Tulum. Tulum was a great time when I went, don't get me wrong, but I was very nervous getting into the water. Now I feel like I understand what I need to know to go down there. And that right there is a really comforting feeling. Because when it comes to scuba diving, from what I've been told from scuba diving experts, it's one of the most important things is keeping your mind in control. And when you have the right strategies, the right, the right techniques that you learn in these instructions, you'll feel much better underwater and you'll be able to enjoy it much more. So guys, we're strapped up. We're gonna be heading into the water now. Here we go. different experience from the first time I ever dove because it was the first time I ever dove was in a cenote this time going in that crystal clear water there was so much sea life down there highly highly recommend to come scuba diving here Sergio really took care really appreciated my man and I want to say he makes you feel so comfortable underwater Sergio let's say it's someone's first time ever scuba diving let's hear what your words are this is the best place for you because even if you don't know how to swim we can help you to do this to, to the dream come true for you. I, we explain you two things we cannot do for you and the rest we do for you. Scuba diving is easy, it's fun, and it's really good. Absolutely. I'm gonna get certified after going on this one. It was amazing, I think I'm obsessed now. Thanks so much, Sergio. Come see him down here at Chacanab, MGS Aquata Stars. They will take care, they're the last one, the last uh, papet. <laughs> Palapa. Palapa, I'm working <laughs> on my Spanish here. And they'll take care of you, come see him. Thanks again. Alright guys, so our next thing on the best things to do here in Cozumel is actually going to be told by my dad who I'm spending the month here in Cozumel. So dad, tell us what's going on. Oh man, what a great time. We got these bikes and uh, we've almost been glued to them ever since we had them. They're wonderful for cruising around the island, cost nothing to operate, a little scary at first, but once you get in the groove of the way people drive, it, it, it's a lot easier than it looks at the get-go. But uh, you know, I can go on and on but I bet you'd rather I didn't, so I'm gonna get on the road. Adios. So guys, you heard it from my dad. One other thing I also wanna mention is it takes about an hour and 20 minutes without any stops on the moped in order to circle the whole island. But keep in mind, 
and you'll see also in this things to do video there are a bunch of places that you can stop at on the way so you can make easily a full day out of it one thing I want to add in guys is if you don't want to take a moped around the island there's other ways you can explore the island one other way that I did was I rode around the entire island on bicycles so I'm here with my primo Bobby Bob and we're doing a 40 mile or 65 kilometer bike ride all the way around this island right now and I will say you want to start early in the morning because it gets really really hot here in Cozumel it's already about 9 30 a.m. and it's a little steamy but still manageable so we started today around I want to say 745 ish and it's been pretty good so far but it's gonna get up to 84 so a nice little exercise so the reason why I think exploring the island is super cool is because there's a whole nother side to Cozumel that a lot of people don't necessarily know at least I didn't before I came and that is the side that's not near the central area the central area is where all the cruise ships arrive and it's where all the shops are a bit more of a touristy area but if you go to the other side of the island that's where you get miles and miles and miles of beaches with pretty much no infrastructure out there now the good news is there's probably three or four stops along the way where you can stop to get food have some great lookout points and so we'll show you guys some of those as we cruise all around the island the marauders getting ready to maraud let's go let's do this let's do this Guys, we just got over here to El Mirador, which is ooh, a very dangerous spot to be walking on where I'm at right now. So where we're at is we are on the eastern side of Cozumel. It's about a 40 minute or so moped ride from near where the ferry port is. So this is actually on the other side of Cozumel where it is very untouched. For the last, let's say 20 minutes or so, we were cruising along this long road that brought us to this uh, beach right here and there was not any development besides a few beach stop-offs along the way. So a really cool place to come and check out if you want a more tranquilo type feeling over here on this side of the island. I will say though, it is not the place you want to be swimming. As you can probably hear, there are waves crashing all around me. The ocean here is not very forgiving, so that's why we're just hanging out up here on the rocks with some really beautiful views. There's some gift shops too if you're into that as well and some hammocks to chill on. So that's this place. Check it out if you have the time guys and we'll see you at the next spot. Guys, we are here at Punta Sur. We just arrived to your beautiful white sandy beaches sitting here right on the coastline of Cozumel and we were greeted by this little fellow right here. Can you give us a couple words for the camera? Let me hear an hola. Repeat after me. Let's try it, let's try it. Give me one second. Hola. You don't have to be camera shy. Turn down the pill. Hola. Hola. All right, well, you heard it from him. He Hola. loves the beaches here. <laughs> so we're here in Punta Sur with the ladies. We have Amanda, we have Milena, and we're gonna be checking out these beautiful beaches. A little video update. Okay, what do you say? So. Hi guys, we are here in Cosmel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. In a fucking dank beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you were amazing. <laughs> that is good, that is really good. Amanda? Hey guys, how are you? We are here in a paradise beach. It's so nice, it's awesome. Cozumel, it's beautiful. It <laughs> yeah. So you have heard it from the Brazilians. They define it as dank and amazing. I can absolutely agree with that. A little bit more about this place. Punta Sur sits about 45 minutes away from El Centro, right where all the ferries come in. And it's a really cool ride. We rented one of these little buggies to cruise around the island for the whole day. We were recommended to visit Punta Sur as one of the top areas to get those beautiful white sand beaches. You pay about $16 per person to get in and that gets you access to the lighthouse, which is about three miles from the entrance. And then you go another three miles that gets us right over here to this beautiful beach that we're hanging out at. You can get food, drink, anything you want easy place to spend a full day at you're about to see the preparation on what it takes to get a good photo it involves getting in the water and <laughs> getting some sand in there a little sand in the hair then you got to make sure you have an amiga over here that can you know get the <laughs> best angles <laughs> got to get a couple shots so you got options of course the 
buggy cruising around the island. I will tell you, this is probably my favorite way to see Cozumel is by buggy, but it's even more my favorite because two Brazilians are the ones driving the car. Alright guys, one of the next things I want to recommend for you here in Cozumel is to come to Mr. Taco. It is my favorite taco in all of Cozumel. We're bringing the bro. We're bringing the bro here today. We're bringing the dad back. We've been here probably at least, what, 15 times? And then we got the Don Rob. He is here for his probably fifth time already Howdy. after spending two days here. So we're going to show you guys how delicious these tacos are and how cheap they are. For me, amigo, uh, try me tres tacos de chuleta con queso y uno uh, queso con nido. So I ordered three tacos, which are called chuleta fresas, frescas, and with cheese, which are, in my opinion, the best tacos on the menu. Some people prefer the pastor tacos, which are also great. Honestly, anything you order on this menu, you are going to love. And make sure you get the queso fundido. Basically, it's stringy cheese. You can get it with chorizo or not with chorizo. And you get three tortillas, and you basically make your own quesadillas. Rico, absolutely rich, delicious. And you're only paying less than a dollar per taco. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, amigo. Hello, this is World Nomax Brother reporting in. And I just want to say that you and I and, and the rest of us right now are going to be a part of a very special club called the World Nomad Pre 100K Club. Imagine that you follow someone with a lot, with millions of subscribers and, and followers, and you are one of the first 100K. How special is it to get in on the journey so early and watch it unfold and unravel? That's us. I know there's a lot of you out there that are viewing the content and maybe a bit silent, you haven't commented. Uh, but uh, slide into the DMs, let them know you're watching, let them know what your favorite stuff is. He's maybe too humble to say it, but uh, he'd love to hear from you. So remember, give him some likes, give him some comments, give him some subscribes. Let's show our boy some love and uh, we're in this club together. Let's go. All right, so my brother's about to have his first bite of a taco de pastor. Taco rico. We've got Bobby Bob, the taco master. What do you got going on over there, bro? We got some pollo with a little queso. Got some guacamole to put on top of that. And he's mm. a seasoned veteran at Mr. Taco. This is my third time here, so you know. This isn't my first uh, rodeo. Not his first rodeo. You heard it live. Here it is, the tacos de chuleta fresca. My favorite tacos here, and actually, my favorite tacos in the world. Get I had a favorite it. that was in Tulum. And that one was called Taqueria Onerio. You can see that in my other video. But after going back to Tulum and then trying Mr. Taco again, these are number one. Unbelievably delicious. Mm. And that, my friends, was Mr. Taco. I can confidently tell you after probably 15 or 16 visits to Mr. Taco that I love this place and I know you guys will too. Hola amigo, buenas tardes. Table, how many? Well, para tres. Para tres. Are you sure? We are four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Vamos, Chupito. Yeah. You quieres? Sí. Vamos. Of course. Uh, which one? All the tables are reserved, but you can show anyone. No Perfecto. VIP acá? <laughs> <laughs> Vamos. All right, guys. So our next thing on the list for things to do here in Cozumel, Mexico, is to make it here for a sunset. You need to find a place right on the water on the west side of the island. So as you saw probably earlier in this video, there is the east coast where you go and catch the sunrise and here pretty much anywhere along the coast, you can find great places. I've spent the last couple nights looking at different sunsets and they're all beautiful. So anywhere you go is going to be great. We're actually here on Monkey Beach Club and there's a couple other ones right up there. So basically in this whole area, there's a lot of places where you can go hang out on the water and it is a great thing to do in Cozumel. I personally love sunsets. So with almost all of my things to do videos, 
This always makes it because it is the best. Come see mi amigo Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice to meet you guys. Bar. He's the man. I have credit from, from Otko Cup. Oh, he's the man, he's the man. The Take best us. drinks around here for the sunset. Let's go. All right, guys, day number four in Cozumel. We are making our way down to the ferry port because today we're gonna be doing a little snorkeling excursion. Five minute drive to get us down to the ferry port via moped or it would have been like a 20 minute walk and that's where we're gonna catch our boat for the next, I wanna say, what is it, six hours, Brandon? Six. Six hour uh, cruise around. So it includes food, some drinks, and some snorkeling. So it's gonna be a good time, shared group tour, about 67 US dollars per person. We'll see you guys down there. of this snorkel trip what we did was we went snorkeling in two different locations the first spot we were snorkeling in super super deep water you could do a little bit of free diving down but pretty much only the guide was able to go all the way down because it was probably maybe 20 25 feet deep where we were snorkeling at but it was super beautiful I do want to mention this is a big tour so it's not the snorkeling you're going to get if you go to places that are super remote, as you could probably imagine. I mean, Cozumel is a very tourist-focused island, and doing a big tour like this, it can get a little bit annoying with so many other people around you. Like, there was multiple times I would just swim up and, like, get kicked. I mean, that just kind of comes with the territory when you're going on a big boat, but obviously it has its pros and its cons. You're with a lot of people, so it's a lot of fun to party with and meet a lot of people, but on the flip side of that, yeah, if you're trying to snorkel and get this like serene only you in the water, this isn't the type of cruise for that. So then we stopped over at a place called El Cielo. And here you could see a lot of starfish when you were snorkeling, which was very cool. And also there's a little sandbar right near the beach where they drop you off to go kind of hang out, do a little snorkeling, maybe even see some uh, stingrays or manta rays, some sort of ray. I'm not entirely sure exactly which one it was. Uh, I love the starfish and all the fish are on. Uh... Swimming right in front of your face, it's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, it was awesome. <laughs> let's go. There we go, you heard it, you know she's my sister because she said, let's go. <laughs> on to the next spot, baby. And then at the end, they bring you over to a place to get some food at a restaurant back on the mainland. So it's worth checking out if you want to do a little booze cruise. I definitely enjoyed it and I would recommend you guys check it out. And so that brings us into our next and last thing of this video, which is the number 10 thing to do here in Cozumel is we're exploring the area all around Isla de la Pasión. This is actually on the northern side of the island. It's about a 25 minute or so moped ride from the centro. Most of it is paved, but once you get to the last probably two and a half miles, you're going to hit some uh, gravel roads with some pretty big puddles. You can get through with a moped, but just keep in mind that it is gonna be a bit of a bumpy ride. Once you get down to the ferry port, there's people that can take you on these little boats. Right here, they're like six person boats. You can take them for about $10 per person just to get over to the island where you can get some food and we'll show you more of the island in just a bit here. I'm really excited to show you guys what's all in this area. It was very interesting to be there though mid pandemic because that island gets maybe five to 600 people visiting when the pandemic is not going on. And so obviously right now, that island was almost completely empty. This unbelievably beautiful island. Some of the most beautiful watercolor that I have seen in the Caribbean. Definitely uh, top three for sure. And there was maybe, like I said, two or three other people out of the 40, 45 minutes that we were hanging out on the island. So normally you can go down there, you can grab a bite to eat. There's a restaurant on the island. There's a whole bunch of beaches to kind of walk around and explore the island as well. So that picturesque white sand beach, Isla de la Pasión is the place to find that. And so guys, that pretty much wraps up this video of Cozumel. It was really jam-packed with so much information because I wanted to make sure you guys could fully understand my experience so that way it helps you when you're deciding what are the things you wanna do when you're visiting Cozumel. And so guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you can do me the biggest favor and give me a thumbs up on this video, it helps so much. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss other videos like our next Cozumel video and so many other videos from all around the world. So guys, we'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.